I will call to order the meeting of the Tax Increment Reinvestment Zone Board, Tuesday, February 27th, 2018, today. I declare that we do have a quorum. This time I will ask for any public comment on any item that's not on the agenda. Would you like to make any comment regarding the tiers business? We will have public comment at the appropriate time on every item on the agenda. Please forgive the way I sound. My sinuses can't decide whether it's summertime or wintertime, so we're trying to work through that. Move approval of minutes. Okay. We have a motion to approve the minutes of the November 14th, 2017 meeting. <clears throat> there was one item that Mr. Biggerstaff was here at that meeting. He was not shown as being present, but I can assure everyone he was here. So with that one correction, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Okay, Mr. Biggerstaff seconds. Any corrections or comments? Hearing none, minutes are approved. Financial report. Uh, John James, Director of Planning and Development Services. <clears throat> Excuse me. The, uh, this is the financial report, uh, which includes through um, the end of February, uh, or what was through the end of February uh, as available uh, as of last week, uh, the expenditures, uh, the normal expenditures for water, sewer, and electricity, mainly for the uh, downtown streetscaping, um, and we paid out uh, incentives in the north of $43,000. Um, also paid out in the south, a consultant fee for the Concho Avenue uh, project, uh, as well as some incentives. And I'll have a detail of that on the next slide. Uh, we also received a repayment of a credit of, uh, you may recall a meeting or two ago, we, um, you all voted to rescind the incentive grants for folks who had not made any progress on those. Uh, so we received some uh, funds back from those. What, John, uh, how much is, that was $990. What, how much more do we have outstanding for repayment? Do we know? I think so, some, I think, may have occurred prior to this oh, report. Okay. okay. Uh, so I think, yeah. and I'll let Shannon correct me, that we met, we've right. received that all back at this point. We did. Okay. We received the 7500 back yes. from yeah. Borgard Lofts. And those were the only two outstanding. Yes. Right. And that just happened to be before this reporting period. Uh, I won't read through each of these, but this is the breakdown of those incentive payments that went out uh, in uh, the last couple of months uh, to the different projects. Uh, this, I just wanted to give you an idea, uh, since it's the f near the first of the year, what the revenue looks like. Uh, we have last year's revenues. Uh, shown and then we show the projected revenues for this year and you can see that those are up significantly that means the tax values are going up so in other words that tax increment uh, that we receive in the tiers fund uh, is going up as well so that that will help in in having funds uh, more funds available to fund both the public projects and the incentive projects um, this is the Summary report for the North uh, shows you the balance beginning in October 1st, which is the beginning of our fiscal year, the year-to-date expenditures, uh, the anticipated revenue for the year. And just one more reminder that um, although that revenue will come in throughout the year, uh, since we know approximately what that amount is, uh, our finance department basically credits our tiers account with that funding, so it's available to spend today, even though technically it might not come in until, you know, as, as it comes in throughout the year. Um, so uh, these numbers basically give us the amount of available funding we have today, but then out of that we subtract the already committed incentives uh, and projects, including the set aside for the Chadburn project, um, leaving a total available of uh, about 1.2 million in the north. Now, let me get to the next slide because we also have one more subtraction to make. Of that 1.2 million that's currently available, um, as you recall, the board's uh, policy says that 25% of each year's funding will be set aside for public projects. 
this 103,000 was that set aside from last year. So that's segregated out for a public project. And so we have to subtract that out, which gets us to the total of available for incentive projects uh, in, uh, in the north. Uh, this is the similar analysis for the south zone, uh, starting balance, uh, year-to-date expenditures and anticipated revenue. Subtracting out those committed projects and incentives leaves us with about $197,000. Now, all of the funds and more of that 25% last year were spent on public projects in the south, so there's no remaining uh, set aside that has to be accounted for. And so in the south, we do have that full 197000 available for incentives. As later, Shannon will get into the projects, I'll just remind you, that's the amount of funding for the entire year. If you choose to, to expend or recommend expending most or all of that on the projects today, um, that would likely mean that we would not have a second round of incentive grant applications later in the year because you would have spent uh, right. all of the funding for the year, <clears throat> which is, yeah. if I recall, that's what happened last year. Uh, you spent all of the funding in the first uh, first round. And as, as Shannon will, will show you, we've got way more requests for funding than, than we have funds available. Um, that is the quick overview of the financial situation. I will add just one more thing. We had a really good meeting. Uh, I know we, we sometimes get this information late, and so it gets to you late just because of the timing of our meeting in relationship to the timing our finance department puts out there, you know, each monthly report. Uh, I think we've set up with them a better system from our perspective um, so that in the future um, these numbers will be easier to get for our for our purposes, uh, and we'll be able to get that information out to you sooner uh, in coming months. So I'd be happy to answer any questions. Well, I think that's a good presentation. It's very, uh, very logical and understandable. Any questions from the board? Okay. Update and discussion on projects in progress. Good afternoon, Shannon Scott, Economic Development Specialist for the City. So the next item on the agenda uh, is updates on projects in process. Uh, just to reiterate what John just stated, these two projects here are uh, projects that were approved in a previous cycle that we rescinded or their contract ran out essentially. Uh, the 10% was paid up front uh, and they did, they did pay that money back. Um, as you can see for Burgess Construction, um, <clears throat> The forfeiture letter was mailed 12-4 of 17, uh, essentially notifying them that their project was um, had, had terminated due to the contract uh, and that they were to owe us the $990, which was the 10% upfront payment. <clears throat> we did receive that 12-12-17, uh, which John did reflect in the most recent financial uh, statement. The other project was the Butterfield parking lot. Again, their forfeiture letter was mailed 12-4 of 17. The 10% of 7,500 was paid, even though it wasn't necessarily reflected in this report. We did get that funding back, which was added uh, back into the South Tiers funding. These are the actual projects that we have in process currently. Um, <clears throat> some of these are from I believe DeLorence DeWitt is the only one that has, uh, that is occurring from two cycles ago and the remaining projects are from cycles uh, that were most recently approved. So for the most part, they're, they're getting completed uh, fairly quickly. And I think the DeWitt, uh, I think his contract expires in November, so he's still got some time to, to get his completed. Here's the remaining projects in process. Are there any particular issues we need to know about any of these projects? All proceeding as planned? Not particularly. Again, uh, DeLorence DeWitt is the oldest one for the most part. Um, what they have been asked for has been completed. They're just finishing up their matching portion. So I think they're probably around 80 or 90 percent complete. Um, we have been in communication, so they are aware of um, 
you know, their contract nearing its deadline and when it expires. The rest of these, uh, lighting and beyond, <clears throat> All the way down to Netco Energy products again were uh, were projects that were either approved uh, in the November cycle or cycle or the last July cycle. So still pretty pretty current with their um, with their projects. Do you have an update on the Concho and Chadburn projects too? I do not. We can certainly bring that back next month if you'd like. Please, if you would. Okay. Okay, so as of our last meeting uh, in November of 17, these are the projects that have been completed uh, for the full 100% and uh, their funding has been paid out completely. So five projects on that list. Okay, any questions on these before we move into the presentation of the projects? Any questions? Okay, very, very good, Shannon, thank you. Okay, so as we get into the actual presentation of the projects, um, again, we had a total of three projects that were submitted in the north uh, and nine in the south. I'm gonna go ahead and start with an overview of the north projects, uh, give the, the name, the amount that was uh, requested, and then we'll go through them each individually with the details and the pictures. Um, and for the most part, from what I can see, <clears throat> all of the applicants are here. Uh, so if you need to ask them questions or they have additional comments, I would, I would certainly encourage that. Okay, so for the three projects that were submitted in the north, we have uh, Taco Bueno for $75,000, the Chicken Farm Arts Center for $11,450, uh, the Eagle Inn Park Motel for $48,198. Uh, so total requested incentives for the north is $134,648. Uh, and to reiter reiterate John's financial presentation, we have about $1.8 million to spend in the north. We'll start with Taco Bueno. Again, they're requesting the full $75,000. Uh, they're intending on putting up a $1.89 million match, which is 94% of the total project cost of $1.164 million and $400. So essentially what they're wanting to do is uh, to landscape the entire perimeter of their property. Uh, including in that landscape is gonna be native, low maintenance and low water plants uh, with a southwestern look, as well as xeriscaping with granite and river stone. Uh, as far as the project criteria on the application, they meet nine of the 14. So I'll go ahead and go through some pictures. <clears throat> Obviously that's an aerial of their current uh, location there on Bryant. Here are pictures of the outside of the, uh, of the building. As you can see, they've already done construction. I think they completed their building a couple weeks ago. Um, <clears throat> so again, they're just looking at installing some landscaping. Here's the rendering that they have provided of uh, the landscape incentives that they're requesting. Again, the actual building is right there. So this, again, the, the landscaping will be around the perimeter um, of the building. <coughs> Here's part of a, a picture of the fencing to, um, to eliminate the undesirable storage and views. Uh, there's a, a, a picture of the potential fencing that they're looking at. I believe that is that. That is all for them. Um, do y'all have any questions for me? I'm not sure, is Larry here? Okay, and Larry Kuhn uh, is here for any questions if y'all would like to, to ask him. <coughs> One by one, or wait until you make all your presentation and hear your recommendation, or how did we do this? I don't remember. It's up to you. Um, 
for the north, well, for, for each of the zones. Essentially, when I'm done presenting individual projects, I will give the staff recommendations. Um, if you would think it's better to ask questions then or as we go project <coughs> by project, whatever you think works the best. the board wants, you want to, what, wait until they're all presented and then start to talk about it now. Okay, go ahead and present all of them, then we'll go back. Okay, next project, uh, Chicken Farm Arts Center. They're requesting 11450 in incentives, uh, putting up a 26% match of $4,061 for a total cost of $15,511. Uh, what they're wanting to do is to uh, provide upgrades to their facade by prepping and repainting the base of the wall uh, and installing a new colorful mural and sculpture. As far as the project criteria is concerned, they meet six, six of the 14. We'll go through some pictures for their project. So this is the current state of the facade. Are the renderings and the drawings that they have provided uh, for their for their new mural. Uh, and I know Roger and Alan are okay. here as well, so they'll be happy to, I'm sure, happy to answer any questions when we get to that point. Okay, final project for the North is the Eagle Inn Park Motel. They're asking for 48198 uh, putting up a match of the 25% of $16,066 uh, for a total project cost of $64,264. Uh, currently, they are asking for asbestos abatement uh, and demo as part of a potentially larger project. Um, they've got a few uh, renditions of some ideas that they're looking at that we'll go through in the pictures, but essentially um, a new build, a new building there on the site, potentially selling it to an investor, uh, or partnering with an entity to build and manage a new property. And they meet seven of the 14 project criteria. So we'll go through some before pictures. Uh, right here is the actual aerial of the hotel and how it um, how it sits and how it's laid out in the dimensions. And again, we'll go into a minute uh, kind of the proposals that they have provided for some ideas uh, for that property. So the first proposal that they're offering is um, <coughs> it's a it's a park space, kind of an open space, um, as you can. Kind of tell from the picture there's some nice plants, um, landscaping, things like that. The second proposal is for a grocery store. And that will conclude the north uh, projects and essentially this slide here represents the staff recommendations in order. Um, so we have uh, Taco Bueno ranking number one for the full funding amount, uh, Eagle and Park Motel again for the full amount of 48,198. As you can see, there's a contingency there that um, one of the ideas potentially is that they demo and build a parking lot uh, and staff was uh, really <clears throat> persuaded to approve the project if they, they did in fact build another uh, a building there and just not repave it. So that was that was the recommendation on that. Uh, and then again, full funding for the Chicken Farm Art Center of the 11450. Okay, <clears throat> I guess we need to take them. But I asked there were three other projects that were in <coughs> I pack it from two months ago. Uh, the Palmer Feeds, the 
um, or parking lot and uh, electric company. Those actually fall in the south. So those will be presented uh, within the south zone projects. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I had the same thought, but, they, but they, the south starts. They're, it, they're very, very close yeah. on the border, but yeah, they do I fall in the south. The same thing. Okay, let's uh, <clears throat> let's take the first recommendation. Might go, might go back to your slide. Your first recommendation was which one of these? Uh, Taco, Bueno Taco Bueno for bueno the full seventy-five thousand. Okay. Comments, questions. Well, personally, I don't see the match here. It looks like a full funding out of the tiers. And uh, all of our projects have a have an owner match to them. If uh, I'm not sure if in the budget, or I'm sorry, the, the packet that you were sent, uh, it does have the budget worksheet, which breaks down the cost between the incentives that were asked and their match. Uh, right, I don't, I see the match, but that's an eighty-four thousand uh, dollar landscaping. On that worksheet A you're talking about? Yes, sir. That was $84,000. And um, you're saying they're asking for seventy five? dollars Correct. And so what would be the match? So the remaining leftover is $1,089,400. That doesn't have anything to do with the landscaping. That's their building. I mean, this is land to me, this looks like a landscaping project, not a not building a new building in in north uh, uh in the north zone correct so some of the items that they have put on there even though they're not the way that it has been done in the past is that any improvement done to the site can, even if it's not of course they're not asking for incentives but that's what they use towards their match so what i've got is site clearing for one hundred thirty-five thousand. Uh, we've got of, we've got it all here okay and that's that's purely at your discretion. That's been something that's been discussed back and forth over the years, um, whether or not you would count unrelated project costs as part of the match. Um, if if the board's direction is, in this type of case, we only look at landscaping and their match has to include a portion of that, um, obviously that would change how much you could uh, award them. But that's purely at your discretion. It just kind of looks like all of it. BGs or whatever, you know, the building's already there, this building's already there, and they want to get it landscaped, which we want to help them with. Uh, but BGs didn't come in with the price of their building they paid as part of their match. And I think you, you touched on an important point there that we have typically not funded project, well, in fact, our policy says we can't fund projects or project costs that have already been done. Uh, it doesn't specifically say that for the match, although I, I think we could make the case that that's true from anything they want to match it with. So uh, to the extent that some of this stuff is already constructed, uh, we may want to consider subtracting any of that out of any funding or matching. How, how much of this 75000 how much match would we require? 21000 No. What percentage do we require? 25%, isn't it? Yes, sir. 25%. <coughs> okay. okay. They, had a, they had a total of 80, 84,400 was in their items 4 through 11, which was the landscaping. <coughs> and um, so the owner match on that would be 21,100. And the tiers, uh, tiers contribution on that would be 63,300. I mean, that's the way I, th I see this project, okay. but everybody sees it a different way. Anybody, any other Mike, comments? what do you think? I, I agree with your assessment. I do. Hey, Jason, you okay with well. Dudra? Okay. Yes. Okay, do we have a motion? I'd so move. Oh, go ahead. So move. Okay, Mike, Mike has a motion. Mr. I'd, Fleur, sec I'd second. second for $63,300. <clears throat> any comments or 
Okay, hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimous. This is really going to look nice in that zone up there. I'm real proud of what, what they're planning to do. Okay. Next, the chicken farm. Okay, any comments or questions about this? Seven thousand four fifty is the is the request. It's gonna be awesome. Everything they do up there <clears throat> helps that North MLK corridor just incredibly. I'm looking forward to this getting done. I'd move we uh, fund it. A second. Okay, we have a motion and a second, and this is a staff recommendation that we fund this amount. Yes, sir. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Any comments? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Cool. Carries unanimous. Okay, the Eagle Park Hotel. <clears throat> I guess I'd have to ask the question. They don't have a commitment from anyone to sell this to someone and rebuild a new motel or anything. It's just speculation the last i spoke they they did not but i know that they had contract uh, contacted some pretty big uh, vendors so that process has been initiated in speaking um with folks in regards to um maybe a, a grocery store or um something to that effect well, the way i saw way i oh, saw yeah. the exhibit mm -hmm. a mm -hmm. it was just a demo, dem, demolition is all it was let so be sure I get the right one here. <clears throat> it says. Uh, it would actually be for maybe. asbestos and yes, the demo. Asbestos, mm -hmm. yeah, demo and then asbestos. Which part of demolition, yeah. I'm sorry? Uh, that'd be part of demolition. The asbestos part's $1,500. Okay. The demolition is... Sixty thousand dollars. I think you'd be I think you'd be working too hard to try to meet the requirements of your uh, of your staff recommendation right here, where you put a contingency in there that they have to um, they have to build another building. And then you have to get into the size of the building, the quality of the building, the use of the building. Otherwise, they're going to put a, um, a temporary storage building up on it and say we got the building and we got the $75,000, whatever they're asking for. $48,000. $48, In my mind's eye, we need to have that as part of a total plan. And then we come in at that point when we have a commitment. Speaking for my banker friend here. No, I agree with That's you. That's what they always ask <clears throat> me. Get well, a commitment first well, and then get yeah, some money. Because we're going to have money in the north all the time. It's just a process of them getting a commitment first and then and then letting us fund to help, it, help them um, transition this, this property into a, a better use. As it sits now, there's a lot of crime in that area. And, you know, I don't know if that's a cart before the horse or whatever in order to get it to get the right folks on board but there is a lot of it's not the most delightful area to hang out in so I don't know if there's a step in the right direction well you know it might, <clears throat> it might be a step in the right direction or not I, I'm just the uncertainty of what they're going to do with it is my concern you know I don't know what's going what the property is going to end up with and what our ultimate investment has been And elevating property values around there, and that's why we need to look at it. Mike, what do you think? Well, I, 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 I agree with both yourself and Lee. Uh, the fact is we, there's, there's nothing here going forward after right. that demo's done. And the dollars that, that uh, we 
given the tiers is intended to improve properties and it needs to be part of a bigger plan. We don't want the building being abated and then sitting there for a long period of time until they <coughs> recruit a buyer. Yeah. Well, I think, I think it would be better stewards of our dollars if we'd wait and see, and as Mr. Fluger said, we, ha we have monies, <clears throat> and we can appreciate what they're trying to do, but I'd just like to see more certainty as to what they've done with it, what's contractually or whatever's going to happen to that so we can play a, play a role in it. Uh, I'm, I'm just concerned of, of the uncertainty of, of our putting money into it, and it still sits there. And, Okay, do we have a, do we need a motion to defer this, or what do you want to do? What's your pleasure, board? Okay, we have a second. Excuse I me, John. I would just say that t typically we have voted to deny these okay. and encourage them to reapply, reapply. in future okay. cycles. Okay, all right. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate that, John. Mike, would you change your motion that we, that we decline at this time? Yes, I'll, I'll okay. make a motion that we decline at this time. I uh, second. Okay. Jason seconds. Any other comments? All in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? It's unanimous. <coughs> okay, moving to the south. Okay, again, we had uh, nine total projects that were submitted for the south. Uh, as you can see here, um, <clears throat> here are the first five. So we have the casual pint for 23000 Casa Decor for 37300 uh, Blake Duncan for 71236 and some change. Uh, the Old Central Firehouse for 75000 One East Tuig for 578 uh, Wynn Palmer for 15570 Arm Electrical for 64000 I'm sorry, 6400 12 and 50 cents. Uh, Dean and Dean Attorneys for 28,182.93. And uh, Palmer Feed for 61,466. Uh, so the total amount of funding requested in the South is 375,967 and some change. Uh, and again, we are limited on funding again for the South uh, with a total available balance of 197 uh, and 176. Okay, well, let's uh, let's back up to the previous page. <laughs> there we go. <coughs> now, are, they, are these in the order that you're stack ranking them? I mean, we're going to take them up like this, or the way that they are um, presented in the presentation is by address. So, at the end, again, once they're all presented individually, we'll present the staff recommendations in order okay, of their right, rankings. Okay, we'll go ahead and then start on with your presentation. Okay, first project is the Casual Pint. Um, they're asking for twenty-three thousand, with a match of ten thousand for a total project cost of thirty-three thousand. Uh, what they're wanting to do is finishing out their patio uh, by adding some coverage, lighting, gates, and misters, uh, along with the electrical work for an event sign. Uh, and they meet, uh, meet eight of the 14 criteria. So this is currently what the back patio looks like today. And here are some, um, some pictures here of the misters and lighting that they would like to install uh, on the patio. Okay. Any questions? Go ahead. Okay, next project, uh, Casa Decor. They're asking for 37300 with a match of 18000 uh, for a total project cost of 53, I'm sorry, 55300 uh, The summary of the work would include upgrades to the facade by prepping, filling in the cracks, priming and painting, as well as clear coating the front security fencing, uh, preservation of the slab and south walls with 15 steel piers due to the poor drainage and erosion. Uh, they're also wanting to remove and replace trim and frame for three of their overhead doors, uh, as well as the removal and replacement of seven of the windows and the back door, meeting seven of the 14 criteria. So 
So here is uh, the building as it currently stands. Again, as you can hear, uh, see here, here are some of the, uh, the cracks in the wall as well as the shifting um, of the foundation and the bricks. Not the best picture, but up here on the top uh, where the arrow is pointing, I believe there's been some shifting as well up there. Here are the, um, the projected, uh, some projected pictures of the painting, um, as well as um, it, does, it does show some pictures here of the framing of the windows and how they're currently cracked, uh, wanting to fill those in and repaint those. Again, some before and after uh, photos. Any questions? Okay, move forward. Okay, next project uh, is at 51 East Washington, Blake Duncan. Uh, they're requesting 71,236 uh, and some change with a match of $40,000, total project cost of a uh, little over $111,000. Uh, the summary of the work, again, is gonna be um, upgrades to the facade by removing debris, repairing, stuccoing, repainting, uh, installing awnings and concrete handicap ramps, uh, as well as the installation of a fire sprinkler system. Uh, this project meets eight of the 14 criteria. Here is uh, the building as it stands, and I believe these are actually four separate uh, buildings, and I know Blake is here and he can help clarify if needed. <clears throat> They're all connected, but four kind of different buildings laid out. Here are the, uh, the proposed outcomes for each of the four um, buildings within that strip there. I know there's an art gallery in there. What's in the other buildings? What what are in there? We we need him to we need you to come to the microphone. This is being recorded for T V so <coughs> Lindo Roofing is in uh in one building. Uh Ms. Mertz's art gallery is, yes. is in there and she has a, a collection. Mm -hmm. The building on the end we're gonna put a, a clothing store in a restoration kind of hardware salvage uh, salvage place where you can buy old doors, cool, you know, kind of cool stuff. Uh, Bronzy painting just moved out. Uh, we're just kind of waiting. I know that if, if I can make this thing pretty and put a sprinkler system in it, I can do, I can cater to whoever I need to cater to and I can get a good client in there. So at, at this point, Galindo, he's building right next door. He he bought the the lot on the end. He's fixing to move out within the next couple of months and, and move right next door to me. Okay. So I'll have two vacant units that I want to go in and and clean up and, and uh, good. Get that done. Okay, thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> okay. Okay, next project, uh, Old Central Firehouse. They are requesting 75,000 in incentives with a match of 513,522 uh, for a total project cost of 588 and uh, 522. Essentially, they are looking to install a new fire sprinkler system uh, as well as uh, provide upgrades to the facade with the installation of the two new outside garage doors. Uh, and they meet 11 of the 14 project criteria. So here's the building as it currently stands today. Uh, top photo here, uh, again, is how it looks today, and the bottom is obviously a rendition um, of what it will look like after it's completed.
will be new signage on the front. Okay, Shannon, so they're going to totally renovate that building for $588,000. That's thanks. <clears throat> yeah. Hello. Hi, I'm Michelle Babish. Sure. Um, yes, we are renovating the entire building. Okay. Well, she's at the microphone. Yeah. Anybody have any questions? <clears throat> I know she have an architectural fee of forty thousand dollars. Are you familiar with the historic nature of the architect that? <laughs> that originally designed that uh, that building? My husband did some research, actually, and was in contact with his granddaughter because he has since passed. He's quite a quite a famous architect. He did yes. a lot of work out in El Paso. Yes, and in some in Tucson, where we're from. Yeah, so oh, okay. it's, it's a historic, uh, very historic uh, property. Yes. Just so you know, this project has gone before the DHRC, the Design and Historic Review Commission, um, which I think is is now our policy for if if that's required, then we ask them to go before that board for approval of their plans before they come to you all for funding. Yeah. And this one has. It's a great project. Thank you. And just to, to touch on John's comment, um, all of the projects that were in the zone, um, I did speak with the applicants and did encourage them to go ahead and begin that process um, of getting the DHRC approval. Okay. Good, that's great. Got a few more pictures on this one. I believe there's some, yes, some interior um, after photos as well. I was trying to, just the artist or the architectural rendition, I was trying to count the number of beds. How many, <laughs> just another question, how many, uh, how many units will be in the bed and breakfast? I'm sorry, to, you have to come back up to. There will be four um, separate bedrooms with bathrooms to be rented. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Chairman, if you could. Uh, yes, sir. Downtown San Angelo is totally behind this project. We've been working closely with the Babbages um, and what they're working towards to make this project come alive. and. Um, we fully support it and ask the board to give its full unanimous support for it as well. Okay, thank you. Okay, let's move on. Okay, next project uh, located at 1 East Tuig. They're requesting funding in the amount of $57,800 uh, to include a match of $450,400 for a total project cost of $508,200. Uh, they are looking to install a fire sprinkler and alarm system uh, as well as provide upgrades to the facade uh, that's going to match the adjoining 1 East Tuig building um, and adhere to the historic guidelines. Uh, they're also going to install reconditioned glass block windows a revised secondary fire exit, and a refinished wall paint system. And this project meets nine of the 14 criteria. So you, obviously you can see the, the three-story building. The one next to it, this one, um, is the, the building that they're looking at renovating. All that don't know, that's the old, old, old Nathan's building from the 1950s. History. Mr. Chairman, uh, also, um, I wanted to add, uh, with the completion of this work on this particular building, um, that remaining block will be pretty much fully restored 
um, in some fashion or another that's going to make a huge improvement to that that one section of that block. Uh, here you can see the interior of the building. Uh, and then finally, the, uh, the after photo. Do they already have plans for the building? I believe so, yes. Yes, we already have plans, and there are um, um, holes being cut, would be cut through it to connect it to the building next door. It would become integrated with the, the building next door. So the title company would use it, or it'd be? Well, there would, <clears throat> the actual plans have attorneys coming in through the, the building that, uh, those are the plans. But the, uh, if you go back to the picture, uh, the building that we're, that we're going to do the work to the facade would actually be an entrance to some, for some attorneys, and they would go across <coughs> the front of both buildings. And then the entryway into one East Two Egg, which is back in the middle of the building, mm -hmm. would go continue to go into the title company, but then it would connect to the back two thirds to the back two thirds yeah. of that building. Of course, what we're asking for is for fire sprinkler and the facade. Thank you. Thank you. Any further questions? Okay. Okay, next project, uh, Wynn Palmer, amount of funding requested is $15,750 uh, with a match of $5,250 uh, and a total project cost of $21,000. Uh, they are looking to remove broken sidewalks, foundation, and overgrown vegetation, uh, leveling the grading, uh, I'm sorry, leveling and grading the lots and paving the lots with compact caliche, allowing for commercial parking and laying the foundation for future development. Uh, this meets nine of the 14 criteria. Here are some current uh, pictures of the condition of the lot. So basically, we're talking about paving. That's what we're. Correct. It'd be uh, removal of debris and then laying down caliche. It's not paving, just a caliche. It's caliche. All right. Okay, next project uh, RM Electrical. They are requesting sixty-four twelve and fifty cents, uh, with a match of twenty-one thirty-seven and fifty cents. Um, as you will note, uh, in the past we did not require projects under ten thousand dollars to require a match. But the last um, policy that was approved, essentially in the South, all of the projects now require a twenty-five percent match. Um, so their total project cost is going to be eighty-five fifty. And this is going to include upgrades to their facade by installing new windows, uh, an exterior rock wainscoting, and upgrades to the landscaping by removing the existing lava rock, weed barrier paper, uh, pouring concrete and installing new retaining walls, wood barrier paper and plants, uh, a boulder, and rainbow gravel. This meets two of the 14 criteria. Here is the, uh, the current uh, picture of the building. And even though these renditions are a little blurry, you can see here on the front uh, where the wainscoting would be installed, uh, as well as the landscaping on the second photo. Uh, 
doesn't exist. Any questions? Indeed. Okay, next project, uh, Dean and Dean Attorneys requesting $28,182.93 with a match of $11,850. Uh, total project cost will be $40,032.93 and they're intending to upgrade uh, their facade by repairing the woodwork, uh, their broken shutters and trim and painting, uh, as well as landscaping installation that will include new pecan trees, shrubs, native perennial plants and flowers, as well as annual color and grass. Uh, they meet seven of the 14 criteria. And here is uh, their, their uh, aerial picture. As well as current photos of their building. Any questions on this one? We've got some after photos as oh, well. Yeah, sorry. Sure. I'm sorry. <laughs> so as you can see, renditions of uh, the landscaping. They actually provided several different concepts, so we can look at those for their landscaping. So two different concepts here. as well as here. Okay, move forward. Okay, final project uh, loaded, located over off of 410 MLK, uh, requesting funding in the amount of $61,466 with a match of $27,258 and a total project cost of $88,724. A summary of the work to be performed includes upgrades to the facade by insta uh, installing high quality architectural corrugated metal siding, wall insulation, new windows, new doors, and handicapped accessibility as well as an entry, inset, and permits and fees associated with the project. Uh, they are meeting 10 of the 14 criteria. Current photos of the building. And here are some examples of the siding that they are wishing to use. Uh, that is the lot last project. So the next slides will be the uh, staff recommendation rankings 
uh, if we want to go through those. Mm. The firehouse number one. Next slide. <clears throat> A stark reality hits us that we have requests for three hundred and seventy-five thousand nine hundred and sixty-seven dollars, and we only have one hundred and ninety-seven thousand one seventy-six to spend. And I'll just I'll just note really quick: this was the one project that the staff did not recommend funding. Um, and at the time, back when these projects were submitted around December, we were still projecting um, an expected revenue of around three hundred to three hundred fifty thousand. Um, so again, our rankings were based off of essentially being able to fund. Um, all of the projects coming through, and then when the actual numbers hit, realizing that we had substantially less than we had predicted. So, well, let's hear from the board as what your thoughts are. How do we allocate? How do we allocate these monies? Or we take them stack ranked and do what we want to do? Well, I would say I'm I'm with Dell over there, and uh, the recommendation of downtown San Angelo on these. These two vacant, the two top two choices, vacant buildings, um, they're both vacant and they're both, uh, they both both have the DHRC designation. And I would move that to start off that we fund those two. That's the East Tuig and the Central Fire Station. I second that. I made Did that as a motion. I second that. Okay, so we have a motion and a second to, uh, and you're talking about fully funding the request, uh, 75000 on a central fire station and 57800 on uh, one East Tuig. So that's the motion and the second. Anybody? Comments? Nope. <laughs> <coughs> Okay, hearing no comments, we have a motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Unanimously approved. <coughs> okay, that, that's 123,700. That leaves 64,376. My thought on that, on the next part of it, and I hate to be the only one talking, but um. I just, I'm trying to get through, it's four o'clock already. Um, <clears throat> one of the projects that, that is, um, is down on the list, but would make a significant difference, and it, and it ought to be in the North Zone. It's a North Zone kind of property, and that's the, the MLK. We've just spent uh, several thousand dollars, I don't know how big it was, for the, uh, what was that? What was the red building that we that was a family center, the DeWitt, the DeWitt building. The DeWitt building is just right down the street from it, <clears throat> and I know we've we've done a lot further north on MLK, and, and a lot needed to be done on MLK. But um, I, I think we ought to consider we can fund that. We have enough money for that, and uh, uh, everything else on there is we're looking at partial funding anyway. Those buildings do need to work, yeah. You're talking about Palmer, Palmer, and Palmer? Yes. Palmer, Palmer, Palmer. I, I'd just like that for consideration. That's that's kind of what I see of what we have left. Or, or hold it over till next, if we wanted to have another South Zone funding. <coughs> but well. that's, to me, that's, that's a good, that's a good investment for, uh, 
for the community right there on MLK because we've we've done a lot of work on MLK for the north, and it's I don't know if y'all I don't know if y'all have driven down MLK from the from the loop up to uh, 29th, but um, when when I was coming back from the rodeo, I uh, I used that instead of uh, instead of Bryant. It's it's a fabulous road now. <laughs> done a fabulous job on that. Well, I'm seeing some heads nod down here. Do we have a motion? Well, for just real quick on consideration, just saying <laughs> the uh, the Casa Decor that's on the corner of Irving, that's right. That building right there is to me. We all the beautiful river work, everything you see, and you actually drive down Irving to get to the Bosque to that parking lot, <clears throat> and that building is that looks like it's falling apart. So I think that one should be considered as well. Question has. Has any tears money been utilized in the past on Casa de Cor? I kind of thought we did too. I asked. Were denied in papers by the county. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. <coughs> You're right. <coughs> we had a choice there, Jost or, or the other, and we could fund them both half, or we can put it all in one. And. Uh, we did it all on Joe's. He did a nice job on that building. Yes. That's really, yes. really did a nice job on that building. Yes. Okay, we've had. But I'm, I'm kind of with Tony, too. I mean, you know, that's, <laughs> that cost of decor is right down there, and it, it needs. Well, it's kind of a Let's, gateway. It's, it's really kind of a gateway into the river, and everything that's going on in that area. And if we want to continue to really take care of those corners, you know, um, I would just think that they're a little further down the list and maybe should rise up a little bit, especially if they haven't had any help at all in the past as well. I want to go back to the MLK for just a second. We're going to double check that. In, in looking at the map, it looks like that may actually be in the north. Um, but we've well, got Well, you know, I'll be, I'll be honest with you. When I was reviewing these and I was making my list for the northern and the south, I put them in the north. Cause by, I, I, did, I thought they were in the north as I well. Did the same I could have missed it a street. I mean, that might be where we need to research that. But well, actually, it was it was stated as a north zone in, in our work papers. <coughs> it was given a, yeah. as, as a north. What makes that be south zone, where DeWitt is and 3rd well, it's, it's, and 4th Street? It's just where the boundary was drawn, and... Um, it sort of squiggles around, but it follows part of Fourth Street, part of Third, then back to Fourth, uh, but then past Bryant, it actually goes all the way up to the freeway. So it, it kind of jogs <coughs> through there. Um, if the address is correct, 410 MLK, then it appears it is in the north. But we'll have to double check, you know, exactly where on the property they're doing improvements and, and confirm that. But uh, I'm about 80% sure right now that it's in the north. Well, I'm just taking your statement at face value on that. Mm -hmm. If that's the I, case, I would rather go with the Casa de Cor than if they're in the north. I think at this point I would feel comfortable if, if you all were if wanted to make the motion, assuming you want to fund it, um, to make the motion to fund it out of the north, and we'll just have to bring it back to you if we later determine it's in the south. We could, we'll have to come back to you for a reconsideration of, of those projects. I make a motion to do that. Okay. Jason makes that recommendation. Now we're going to fund. Yes. Yes. Out of the north. I'd make I'd and make the motion to flame. we oh, have a I'm second sorry. on Jason's motion. Second <coughs> that. Okay, Dudrum has a second. Any other comments? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Passes unanimously. Okay, let's take care of the rest of this money. <coughs> let me let me just throw out an idea here. <coughs> if uh, and I and I do go with Tony on the on the Casa de Cor. Um, and with any other funding, that means we have about 30000 a little less than $30,000 left in the account. And let's leave that in the account. And if we can't get the Palmer, Palmer, Palmer uh, in the north, that when we have another round, 
that we could uh, consider funding that if that would give them what they if they would go ahead and finish their project with a thirty thousand uh, dollar lower uh, allocation. So are you what are you wanting is to get a firm determination on Palmer, Palmer, and Palmer before? No, we no, no. Go ahead, other? go ahead and do what we're doing. Yeah. <clears throat> go ahead and spend Casa de Cor, and then maybe not spend the other thirty thousand. Yeah, the twenty-seven thousand. And, and then if we have another round. <clears throat> Because uh, that old building's going to be there. I mean, it's just ugly as sin. Uh, <clears throat> it'll be there just like that next next time around. And we'll offer them the thirty thousand dollars if they want to, if they want to do that. Not today. Yeah. But just as to look at it. Okay. Otherwise, Mike, you know, we're going to be on all these others. We're going to be partially funding them. Then we go into the deal like we got in with you. Yes. Well, it's partially funding. Do you want to do it and all that kind of stuff? Yes. So I'm making the motion we we fund Casa Decor. Okay. All right. We have a motion to fund Casa Decor. I'll second. second. We have a second. Any comments? Say all in favor. Say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Passes unanimously. Let me, let me make a comment to these other folks that made requests. You know, your requests have merit. We're just handcuffed because we don't have money. We don't have enough money. And uh, not to say that in the future we might find a solution to it. I'm not sure, but uh, it is what it is. And so I apologize that we don't have any real monies to move forward okay uh, can I make one comment sure. though? <clears throat> when I was looking at the <clears throat> our original estimates our original estimates showed that <clears throat> that we we would be and I don't have the numbers but I mean I don't have the tax numbers but <clears throat> but the the South was only getting a total of $160,000. We first started this about six or seven years ago, or eight years ago, whatever it was. And now we're up to uh, uh, 300000 Right. So, And the South is moving up very rapidly because we've been funding several projects and we've reallocated because we knew we were, we, were under, we were under appraised on a bunch of those properties. So... Uh, uh, we're just, in terms of what we thought is going to be and what it is, the South has come up a lot faster than what our earlier projections were when we first got the tier zone. So I'm real pleased with that. But, but that's pretty good funding, 300000 as opposed to 500 in the North. So, Are there any okay. just workshops like for folks, like some of the scores a little lower, you know, anybody that scores below? Say seven, fourteen below fifty, fifty percent. Are there any any ways to work with those folks to just? I mean, the more the merrier, and the more we can get everybody on board. But the better you score, the better your chances are. Is there anything going on that just helps educate folks, that, especially in the north? There's a lot of money, but I don't know if anyone knows how to approach it. That's what Shannon does. That to a degree, <laughs> so she's good at right. People. And I think that's a that's a great idea. Um, what we we've, we've started to implement in the north. Uh, per the mayor's request, per the per the chair's request, is to actually visit these folks in person. Um, they do get brochures. We do we do mail outs, informational mail outs. But sometimes it is good to just have a have a face. Uh, I think in the south, it it's pretty well known out there. Um, and like and like uh, Jim said, all these projects are great. <clears throat> there, there's not really one single one that's just that you know. It's tough to decide, especially when the funding is limited, but if that's something that y'all would suggest, I have no problem sitting down with these folks and maybe going over a better plan. And we have had instances in the past where we present a project originally and the board requests that we come back with more information just to make it a bigger, broader project. Um, so I, I certainly think that's a great I've idea. seen and been a part of the projects, and I know it's, it's a little daunting, you know, and especially in your day-to-day, -day, but I think it would be, you know, just a good thing to offer and maybe make everybody just come together, have a good chance to at least get out there and get a better score and get a chance to, you know, like I said, all the everybody that's building this and 
representing and beautifying, especially that those facades, makes a big difference in how it looks when you drive through a city. One more uh, note, the city uh, hosts a de de uh, design and review committee uh, council every Friday. It's available to anyone that's working on a project and I uh, highly recommend taking advantage of those meetings as well. Getting that information out so people know that that does exist. Uh, hey. Chairman and Board, Dave Erickson, Small Business Development Center Director. Uh, in addition to Shannon, we'd like to offer our services to work through the TIRS application. It, it fits exactly what we do for those businesses that become our clients, and we'd be more than happy to, to help. We appreciate that. You have a good track record assisting people, so thank you. You bet. Thank you, thank you Dave. You know, the, the fact of the matter is, if, if we had the luxury more dollars in the south like we have dollars in the north this would be a real fun job <coughs> we could make a significant impact but i don't want anyone to be discouraged you know there's if there's a will there's a way and we're going to see if we can do something so i want to appreciate the board and your input and your activity today uh, i guess we need to move on to the Next item, uh, discussion and possible action regarding updates to the project plan. Uh, well, let, let me make a couple of comments and then I'll just defer to your all direction. Uh, this was an item requested by uh, board member Grindstaff, who, who is not here today. Right. Uh, and also, when we originally planned for this, this is kind of an in-depth discussion. It was not originally scheduled for a day where you would also be considering incentive right. grants. So didn't, didn't we table this back in November? We did. It's been tabled September two or three or times. Like um, yeah. I would recommend, partly because Ms. Grindstaff isn't here, but also because we've taken a lot of time on these incentive grants, I would recommend simply pushing this to the next meeting when we okay. won't have as heavy of an agenda. That's... Um, that's probably not an action plan. It's just something I declare that's what we'll do. Okay. Okay. I'll then go ahead and jump into the report. director's yes, report. I just wanted to, to mention one thing. Uh, we, although we didn't have an update for you today, a formal presentation, I wanted to give you a brief update on the Chadburn project. Um, it, it is still moving forward uh, as, as planned. Um, however, there were some MPO dollars, the Metropolitan Planning Organization, the that gets funding from TxDOT. Uh, they had originally allocated $4 million to the project. Um, it turns out uh, after the time we applied for the grant and by the time we got the grant, TxDOT had changed the rules uh, such that um, those TxDOT dollars have to be used on system, which means a TxDOT roadway uh, because the Chadburn Street is not a TxDOT highway. Um, those $4 million can no longer be used. Uh, unfortunately, when we applied for the grant, the rules said we could use that. Um, long story short, though, uh, that $4 million is not available, although that would have helped fund uh, future projects. If you recall, we split the Chabron project into A, B, and C segments. Uh, so we are still moving forward with the first segment of that project. Um, as noted in the financial report, the authorization for the TIERS funding that is set aside for that project is still being set aside. Um, and so uh, I just want to give you that update. You'll get a more full update, uh, including some information from our engineering folks on the status of the plans for that uh, at an upcoming meeting. Uh, but I did want to just update you a little bit on uh, some of the changes to that. But, but as we mentioned, I think at the last meeting, uh, we did receive the, the TxDOT grant uh, for that project. So it is moving forward. That's for the whole project or just a portion of it? The design, uh, at this point, it's going into the design phase. The design phase, as I understand it, will include design of the entire stretch from, uh, I think it's from Washington uh, to, uh, I believe it's the freeway, uh, uh, Houston Heart. Uh, but the first phase, so we'll, we'll design the whole thing. The first phase to be constructed at this point would only be the first phase, which I believe is from the river to, I want to say Harris. Don't don't quote me on that, but it's it's in that vicinity, a block one way or the, the other. And the the idea is we will apply again next year for the same TxDOT grant, um, and hopefully uh, get more of that TxDOT uh, funding. 
with which we could use not, not only the TIERS funding, but there were multiple sources, if you remember, from COSA DC, uh, river funds, water and sewer funds, uh, a bunch of sources went into that. And so our hope is over the, you know, this will take to design and construct, it'll take three to four years anyway. Uh, we're hopeful that we can get another grant or two to help supplement that and ultimately be able to do the entire project. Good. Mr. Chairman, I have a question. John, where are we on the widening of Concho there at, um, at Abe and I made a note. I don't know uh, when uh, oh, I'm sorry. Board Member Fluger mentioned that a minute ago. I made a note that we'll try to get an update from our engineering folks for the next uh, tiers board meeting. I know they're in the design process. Uh, in fact, one of those expenditures that we paid out was, was to that uh, design consultant. Uh, but I don't know how far along they are on the design. Very good. Okay, sir, what else? That's all for my report, unless you have any questions for me. Well, thank you. We appreciate you. All right. Uh, we'll, our next meeting will be March 27th, 2018 at 3 p.m. Look forward to seeing everyone. And we'll entertain a motion to adjourn. We have a motion. Second. We have a second. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Hearing no objection, we are adjourn adjourned. Thank you.